What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Import and Modify. This episode is going to be more of a just general mashup. So, got a lot of things I filmed, and I don't know exactly how to make an episode out of it, but we'll just see how it ends up. Gives you guys some viewing entertainment and keeps things rolling for me. So, as you can see behind me, I got some preludes and also the engine from the the Mazda. I got the parts in finally for that, but I had my hands busy with this for a moment, so go ahead and check it out. So I've been waiting on parts to come in on that and I've been collecting them over there now generally got most of the parts I need now in order to uh, continue on with the uh, protege getting this thing swapped in but in between I stay pretty busy like the prelude right here that's a job that I had to take on and also I do little things in between like I had some motorcycle tires to change out and whatnot so I stay pretty busy in between and uh, you know so I'm gonna be hitting it basically just hitting it man trying to get this thing into the uh, car and uh we don't have all the parts but we have enough in order to uh get to that point i guess and uh as you can see i have another prelude right here kind of did a thing let's just go ahead and jump to that video what are we doing buddy we're gonna look at a car which is a honda prelude oh you think daddy's got enough cars mm, yes <laughs> We're going to go look at another car. One popped up on the marketplace and uh, it's kind of hard to uh, not get it for the price. So we're going to go look at it and if it all works out, uh, we'll have another car. So I'll show you guys uh, if I get it. Let's find out. just bought the car and I'm headed back to the shop my wife's gonna pick me up and bring me and Noah over there to pick it up and I gotta tell you that I think I did very well getting this car and it was a little goody under the hood that I wasn't expecting I'll show y'all more of that whenever uh, we go get the car but yeah we're just gonna cruise back in the M3 now and go pick up my Honda Prelude <laughs> I got a lot of cars hi Noah Yes, sir. All right, guys, so here we are in my brand new 96 Honda Prelude, and I told you that there is a goodie in the hood, but I'm not gonna show y'all that yet. It is automatic, but uh, you know, uh, for the price that I paid, man, I didn't care. I paid $1,400 for this, guys, 1,400 bucks. Now, I'll show y'all the outside of it, but it runs and it drives for $1,400. Here, buddy, hold that for me. Check this out, runs and drives. Now the things are a little noisy and all that, but that's okay. And uh, the fact that I bought a Honda Prelude that runs and drives with the stereo system, still got current tags. I mean, you can't beat that. And I checked the oil to make sure there was no oil and coolant mixed. It's all good. And uh, it's got some issues. It needs a tune-up. It needs to be gone through. It needs tie rods when you drive it. I mean, you can hear it. Listen. It feels like there's no inner tie rod left. So hopefully we can drive this to the shop. We're literally like, I think two miles from the 
shop. So let's go ahead and take this thing on its voyage to its new home. And it has no power steering, no AC. Oh my goodness. First thing I'm gonna put in this thing is power steering because I don't roll like that, man. I don't. It might be brakes, Noah. I think the brakes are dragging. What is that? That's exhaust or something, I bet. I bet it's exhaust. It's dragging rope. So as you can tell, it's it's rough. It ain't it ain't the uh the best thing in the world, but <laughs> I gotta go slow with this man. This is gonna suck. It's gonna scrape. I had to do it. Oh well, it is what it is. Give it partial throttle, it drives fine, but whenever you gas it, it bogs itself, and I do believe that I may know the reason why. Has a check engine light, the guy told me that it was for an O2 sensor. Uh, you know, I didn't bring my scan tool, honestly, because I knew I was gonna buy it regardless. I just wanted to hear it run and make sure there was no oil and coolant mixed. And this is Amarillo, Texas, so it's always Super windy. <laughs> it shifts hard. You think this is a piece of crap, huh, Noah? Yes. <laughs> Why do you think it's a piece of crap? The exhaust is dragging. Yes. <laughs> the steering is making noise. Yes. So you see how it is right now though, right? Watch how I get it running and driving. It'll be good. The, uh, the suspension is crap. It needs coilovers. I think they got heated springs on this thing and it's totally slammed. I mean, it's totally slammed. Like, I mean, y'all saw me trying to get out of that driveway. <laughs> so it's not perfect, but 1400 doll hairs. It's worth it. <laughs> One of the reasons I wanted a Prelude is because I actually have a lot of H22 parts. I actually have a Stage 3 Goud head. If you remember Goud Racing, I think it's Goud, G-U-D-E, it had the frog. Uh, I actually have a Stage 3 ported and polished uh, Goud Racing head, believe that or not. So I have a lot of parts that I've been uh, holding up, golly. I have a lot of parts that I've been holding and stuff and uh, just waiting for the opportunity to use them one day and uh, this came available and that's kind of how I do things as I uh, collect parts knowing that one day I'll, I will eventually find the right car for the right price and when things like this come up that's when I jump on them and then I already have a stockpile of stuff that I can do and everything but I don't know how much tunable these cars are in automatic form so I'm probably more than likely I'm gonna have to manual swap this thing, but uh, I don't know. I think like a, uh, a full-on boosted Prelude would be pretty damn cool, right? I just think a turbo Prelude would be pretty cool. Yeah. But we'll just have to see. I do have a good uh, a good racing head and some other good parts, so definitely gonna be some work done to this in the future. Here, hold that. I gotta be careful going over these bumps.
Now, please excuse the wind because this is Amarillo, Texas, and it is a very windy day today. Let's go ahead and get out and show you guys the whip. So yeah, I did a thing. I now own a Honda Prelude. So the goodie, if you guys saw the stamping, it's a H23A. So that is the SIR engine that came out of the Honda Accord overseas. And I was doing research on the differences between an H22 and an H23. Basically, it's the same engine, different crank and different rods to give it a different stroke. And that achieves the uh, 23 displacement as opposed to the 22 so it's pretty much the same thing in a nutshell but the way that this thing drives i was doing other research on uh certain things and uh i believe they just put that engine swap in this car kept the stock electronics and those engines have different size injectors so with the stock electronics and a different size injector that would probably give it the problem it's having as far as the drivability goes. And I'm kind of kind of hoping that that's the case with this. So I have not yet even touched it. I have to dig into it and uh, figure it all out. But hey, that's another video. I'm going to switch things now to this prelude and give you guys a little bit of showing of this. Uh, and talk briefly about what I had to do with it. And then uh, we got to go out and do a couple little pulls and runs to uh, get the fuel mapping better. So uh, we'll do a little bit of a little bit of that. And uh, I need to crank this up and drive it around so I can lower this down. So let's just do a cold start up with this car and see how it starts up cold because I'm sure he warmed it up whenever I bought it. He mentioned that he he, he did warm it up, I think. So let's go ahead and cold start it. So it seems to start and idle pretty good for a cold start and uh, that's a good thing. I have not yet checked this check engine light. I will. Probably won't be on this video, but uh, I'm going to drive this thing around and uh, we got to get going on this thing. So we're gonna lower this prelude down, but I noticed that we have a leak and uh, let's check it out. Looks like coolant, as you can see, we got coolant. And, uh, oh, look at that. Hose clamp ain't all the way seated up there. I bet you that might be where it's leaking from. What else we got that would be up high? Oh. Let's go ahead and tighten that clamp. We'll put it in the right location, clamp it down, and uh, see if that'll fix that little leak. And uh, I'll crank the car up and show you guys uh, what was going on with it. All right, so we're gonna talk briefly about this customer's Honda Prelude. And I do find it quite funny that I went ahead and bought me one while I was working on this one. So. It's going to be a uh, quite a uh, good conversation when he comes over here to pick this up and finds out that I now have one. So, But anyway, the problems he was having was he brought this engine to a local machine shop to have it rebuilt. 
and I know the machinist and I, I use him. He's good and uh, his work is good. So I know that that rebuild was good. He put the uh, engine, the owner put the engine in himself, but couldn't get it running. So uh, he then contacted two big, bigger performance shops here in town. And I'm not a performance shop, I'm a general everything shop, but these guys, you know, they advertise performance and all this stuff. They have dynos and well, one place got dyno and everything and they could not fix it. He brought it to this one place, couldn't fix it. Brought it to another place, couldn't fix it. They guaranteed him on the phone, oh yeah, no problem, we'll fix it. At that point, he was frustrated and then he ran into a friend of mine and he said, yo, bring it to Petrie. Bring it to Petrie. Now, he brought it to me and I got this thing up and running in a couple of days. And uh, basically, uh, what he had going on with it was uh, he had connectors in the wrong spots. He had a lot of hacked up wiring. He also had bad sensors, uh, things failing. So, and he has a tuner on it. It's a demon tuner. So uh, basically, I brought up the uh, I brought up the uh, the live feed on the computer and I was looking at sensors everywhere and I was looking at what sensors were reading wrong, what sensors weren't reading at all and just kind of went through it th in that manner until I got all the sensors working correctly on the laptop and uh, once that happened I knew that it would crank and run and lo and behold it did. I, I was all over this car from fuel pressure to everything to make sure that this thing is good. And uh, lo and behold, when I got it running, it was running really lean, like 22 to one. And there's no wonder that this car, this engine failed because he's been driving it around like that and it killed the engine, basically. So uh, I had to go in and do a lot of research and set the parameters, set the preferences. And then I was able to get it up and running and bring the idle up to a safe point of uh, 47 to one but uh that was just a rough set and i still got to do a lot of a lot of tuning on the map and i'm not i'm not an expert but i know enough to get around on these things and being that we're here in amarillo there's not a lot of tuning shops so i'm the best bet this guy has so i want to make sure that this thing is going to be safe enough for him to drive he's got to put 250 miles on it to break it in and then he's got to come back in we drain the oil and then we'll be able to finish off the tune but i'm going to put a rough safe tune on it to where he can drive it and the ratios will be safe for him to drive it so that he can bring it back after the old change and then we can go ahead and start tuning everything the low cam thoroughly the high cam and all that stuff like that just to make sure that this thing will last because it's not gonna last the way that tune was i mean i couldn't believe i couldn't believe how bad it was but anyway let me go ahead and start it up for you guys real quick and uh after that, I'll load up the computer and uh, we'll take it on a couple little rips and do some data logging and uh, change the tune up a little bit. And I think after that, we're going to call it on this episode. So let's go ahead and get it. All right, I have to charge the battery a little bit and I had to whack the starter with the hammer. Seems like the starter is getting a little stuck, but I got it fired up. And basically, I'm going to go and data log right here. And I activated everything, gives me live data on all my sensors. There's the tracer on the map right there. And as you can see, we're idling 13.9 and we're warming up. So everything's checking out good. The tracer shows you where the map is at. Wanted to verify the alternator is good, it's good. So that is good. I'm just gonna let this thing warm up a little bit and then after I let it warm up uh, we'll start making some little passes back and forth on the street see what we got as far as data logging on the air fuel ratios and make any corrections that we need so that this thing can ride properly and drive throughout the uh, power range and not be lean or too over rich in anything and then uh, that should be good for him to drive it there's also a feature on this map it's called lambda Lambda is right here, and basically when you click that, while you're data logging, it'll show you the sales where it traveled at, and it'll give you the fuel ratio where it's off. So we're going to use that feature right there when we drive it to determine which sales need adjustment, and then we'll go into those areas and adjust. Now the sales around it that I can't get to, what I'm just going to do is I'm going to go ahead and scale them just scale them up so that they match closely to the cells that I adjust and that'll give a basically a rough enough tune 
to uh, drive it and it'd be safe have it hit any cells that I haven't gotten and uh, basically he's just gonna put a little bit of miles on it like I said and then when he comes back uh, it'll be broken in enough we can go through it more then but as you can tell the idle is set pretty good so I got Dana the owner with me he's been driving the car while I do some data logging and can you tell the difference as we've been going oh no a lot of difference so it's working so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clear all the markers and that gives us a clean sheet we're data logging right now and I'm gonna have him do a couple pulls and just drive it normal for the first see as he's driving it it's logging Cruising around 14. Okay, now just go through it to 5,000 RPM. It's logging. 12.7. So it's hanging out there on high end. 13.2. All right. All right, that's good. Just cruise it. Put your hand over that. 14-1 cruising right here. All right, we're good. And basically, I'm just checking his cruising uh, air fuel ratio at cruising steady throttle. He won't 14-7 basically, and that's what we've been achieving. And then also on his acceleration, I've been wanting about you know 13-1, 13 flat to the late 12s seems to be working out pretty good with this vehicle so uh we've just been going back and forth round and round right here so stop right here so you can't count all these right there for being red because he hasn't been accelerating from one stopping point he's been throttling up and throttling down and that'll play with the map so clear all markers it clears gives us a clean slate go ahead and just uh, go through the gears to up to 5,000 RPM. So we got a lot of blue and it's liking it. are where it's happy with all the reds are ones that it's lean at so what I do is I go ahead and I go to these areas and then I richen them and then basically I'll do like an area see like right here I have like a bunch of red in this area what I like to do is like from there I'll just highlight those sections right there and then I'll just richen them up By me hitting the plus, I'm giving it more fuel per those cells. Go ahead and gas it up a little bit. All right, gas it up right there. All right, good. All right. Okay, slowly give it the gas. That's all right. good just just drive it so basically all these cells that are blue it's happy all these that are red it's not it's all it all comes down to the consistency of the pass because I noticed if we don't get a good pass any kind of hiccups on the throttle it changes the cell on that uh, data log and uh, gives us a red cell but typically that's how I've been going at it and then you have a two a 2d map you can use as well as reference now we've been here in these areas and I've been cleaning it up but uh, it'll give you a visual representation of right here so around 3,000 rpm in this area needs to be cleaned up a lot but all around right here you see where it's hitting the cells these are all pretty parallel and nice right here is where we got to work at so 
all about finding the right load in the right cell and then making your adjustments from there and that's pretty much it in a nutshell and that's like I said I know enough to be dangerous and that's what I've been doing is working on the tune to get it better to where he can drive it and does it drive a lot better than it has it drives a lot better than it ever has so there you go so we're making steps in the right in the right area so in the right direction I guess we're making steps in the right direction but um, I think it's safe enough for him to drive it because he's not gonna go over 4,500 RPM right correct so he's not gonna go over 4,500 RPM and we're good in those areas for cruising and driving on the highway so he's good to put the 200 and 50 miles on his vehicle and then when he comes back we got to work on uh, getting his VTEC to engage because his VTEC's not engaging uh, he does have a broken VTEC pressure switch and some other things going on so we got to figure all that out and uh, we will uh, tune it for the high cam because that what we were working in was just the uh, low cam there's a high cam setting so anyway I hope y'all understand this. I mean, I'm trying to make it as simple as I can. Let's go to the back like you did and I'll open the door. All right, I'll see y'all here in a minute. Right, just to give you guys a visual representation of a 2d graph of the map that I've been working on basically been working on these lines here because we're working on the low cam profile these lines here I've been working on that's why they look parallel but as you get up they're still bunched up because we haven't tuned much in that area so what I've been doing was is I've been logging the sales of where these are at play around with this for an example this one right here if I was to add fuel it raises it up as you can see it's raising it right and then I put this right here on this little I put the courser right there and then I can add fuel right there as well right and basically that is smoothing the map that is smoothing the map out basically you're kind of like making things parallel with uh, with the bottom row and by doing that it'll allow you to clean the map up so when you do log and you're getting those cells they'll be more closer to the target ratio than where they were before so one of the little tricks I learned with the uh, the dots and doing mega squirt so I found by playing with the graphs and smoothing them out will actually get you closer to the targets where you want to hit. Now, I just tuned for the low cam. Uh, the VTEC uh, will do that after he puts the 250 uh, miles on it. And uh, we will uh, work on those maps. Now, the VTEC isn't really engaging right now. And he's got a broken VTEC pressure sensor and some other things going on. So he's going to put some mileage on it. He's not going to drive it all crazy, right? Okay, and uh, once he puts the 250 miles on it, we'll drain the oil, and then we'll get the VTEC to engage, and then we'll work on the VTEC high cam profile. But basically, that's how it is, and it's kind of boring to explain, but it's fun to mess with, if that makes sense. All right, that's, I hope, hopefully I can make some sense out of this and edit it well. We'll see. All right. All right, guys, this video was a little bit all over the place, but I think it should be very entertaining for y'all. You know, I wasn't, I wasn't set on buying a new car. It just, it's what it happened. It just happens. You guys know how that is. And when things come up like that, I have to jump on them because they will disappear and I won't see a deal like that around in this region for a very long time. So I did it. I got stockpile of parts to uh, mess with the prelude back here. But I think for the time being, I'm just going to go ahead, figure out the problem it has, get it right, drive it, enjoy it. It'll be an extra car. But on the flip side of that, I do have a special something coming in for the SRT4. And uh, if you guys noticed, I talked about those wheels. Well, 
Let that be a clue, huh? <laughs> and also I got some parts in for the oil drain as well because the way the oil drain on those cars are shaped, they're a little hard to get to one of the fasteners. So I ordered an aftermarket one and hopefully that'll allow me to have easier access have I ever need to take the drain off or whatever. So we're gonna swap that out and I'll present the new uh, thing I got in for the SRT4 in an upcoming video. So stay tuned for that. I have not yet registered it, but that is coming as well. And we're gonna do some pulls and drive it on the street and enjoy it. And like I said before, a lot of content happens on this channel. I still don't understand why I'm not at 10K yet, but um, hopefully we can get subscribers up to 10k i'd like to get more people you know uh watching and uh involved with some of my builds and stuff like the srt4 you guys are very helpful on that i appreciate that hopefully i get some more of you guys in on other cars to help me along with my builds so uh until then guys i hope y'all like this one like comment subscribe and share y'all peace out bro